What's up guys, Sila here and I am back with another video and this time we're going to be taking a look at 10 hunter pets that are pretty cool though unique that aren't spirit beasts and I see quite a lot of guides and stuff that focus on you know beast mastery specific pets or the spirit beasts and while those pets are pretty cool there's some really nice pets out there that are available to all hunters so this guide will focus on 10 of my favorites and there'll be pets that all three hunter specs can get. So if you want to go pick yourself up a pet, I'm going to be showing them off and also explaining how to get them in this video. So as I mentioned, all of these pets are kind of cool and unique. And the idea is they're all a bit different from the pets in the same family. And the first one up is Fenrir from Halls of Bala. And it's a wolf, but it looks really cool compared to the rest of the wolves. It's using the newer wolf model, but it looks really battle hardened with like a spear in it, and like a scratch on its eye. So if you've got quite a, a brutish looking transmog, then this could be definitely a nice pet to go along with it. And this comes from the Halls of Valor on Mythic. And the idea was it was introduced in Legion and it was like a solo challenge for hunters. You had to solo the Halls of Valor Mythic, which wasn't easy at the time and get all the way up to the second boss, kill the second boss, and then you would be able to tame Fenrir. Now that you're 120, it's gonna be a lot easier, and you can try this at 110 if you want to, but it is gonna be a bit more of a challenge and you will need some gear as well. But essentially, just head over to the Halls of Valor, which is in Stormheim, make sure you're on Dungeon Difficulty Mythic, head inside, and we can start clearing the trash up to the first boss. Once we're at the first boss, it's just a simple case of dodging the lines of like lightning that appear you can check the left or right sides to see which lines the dragons are going to follow and then just kill down the boss move out the spinning kind of blade thing nothing really too much to this fight especially if you as i said you are 120 you should have no problems doing this whatsoever carry on killing the trash and then eventually you will make it to kind of like this grand hall area once we're here you want to take a right and you can run pretty much down the center and ignore all of the rest of the trash and you will see a portal at the end going to jump through the portal and that's going to take you into this kind of outsidey looking area and then don't do what I did the boss does need to be DPS down on either the left side or the right side it will swap what side it's on so find where it is and DPS it down and then eventually it will run off and then it will be in its final location so follow it to the final location and then here you can actually kill the boss so as long as you're solo and at least 110 then we'll end on mythic difficulty then what will happen is once the boss is finally dead in the cave directly behind it will spawn a kind of passive version of the the same pet or same boss whatever and you'll be able to tame it and you will get yourself the pet the next one up on our list is gib the banana hoarder and for some reason i just find this pet quite hilarious it's got a little fez on it's really not that different from the other monkey pets apart from the fact that it has a fez but I just like that little unique quality that it has over other uh, pets that you can get. Like it, it has like human things and it has a little hat on. So quite like this pet. And you can get this from Swamp of Sorrows. It is a rare spawn. It is on about a three to five hour rare spawn, a respawn timer. And it is going to spawn in the same location. So you can just sit in this spot. You can come back every once in a while if you want to. You can log on over characters and log back on. It's up to you how you want to go about trying to get this pet. You can check war mode, non-war mode. And eventually it will spawn, tame it up, nothing too special there. And then you will have yourself a gib. Next up is the Lowland Mana Shell. And this looks very similar to Tortoise from Throne of Thunder. Probably a boss that infuriated quite a few people with the spinning shells that knocked people up consistently. But it was quite a cool looking model. And the boss version still isn't tameable, but you can get the Lowland Mana Shell, which has one of the best pet feign deaths available in the game. It looks great and will confuse quite a lot of people. And to get this pet, you're going to have to head to Surama in Legion in the Broken Isles. And just to the left of Telenor in this kind of river area, you're going to find these lowland hard shells. And essentially the mana shell is a rare spawn, quote unquote, of the hard shells. So have a look around the area, see if you can find a lowland mana shell. There might be one already up. If not, start murdering all of the hard shells in the area and keep doing that. And eventually a mana shell will spawn instead of a hard shell. And you can tame it up and you will have yourself the boss tortoise or lowland mana shell, whichever one you want to call it. The next pet up is going to be a mechanical one and this is the mechanical gorilla Amy02. And to tame this you will need to have the mecha bond imprint matrix which requires you to either buy it from the auction house or engineers can make it with legion engineering. Uh, get one of those, it's worth buying because it allows you to tame all of the mechanical pets. Now you won't need this if you're a goblin or a gnome hunter. 
those don't require it, but everyone else will need one of those if you don't have one already. Once you use it once, you'll be able to just tame all of the mechanical pets. So just a one-time use thing, permanent on your character. And to get to this pet, we need to head to the Ungoro Crater, which is found in Kalimdor. And then kind of in this cave in the top right-ish, all the way at the back, you're going to find Amy lay on a rock. And essentially, this is kind of a tough spot, a uh, tough tame to do, but it's also cheesable right now. So the way you cheese it is by staying at max range and DPSing it down to about 30%. It has to be below 30% and then you can begin the tame. If you have a pet out though, I would recommend despawning your pet because if your pet gets too close, it will stand up and start chasing you down and it deals a lot of damage. It's going to be autoing you for about 20 to 30% per auto depending on your gear. So I would recommend, you know, trying the cheese if available. And if not, you're going to have to kite it around and make use of respawning your pet and stuff like that. But yeah, it does hurt. And I think this is tameable by people 55 and above, uh, all the way up to 120. So if you want to get yourself a cool mechanical pet at low levels, you can as well. But yeah, there you go. Amy02, quite a nice mechanical gorilla. Next up is the Plague Toad. And this is the first toad that we can get that looks very similar to Kragwa. It's the only toad tameable right now that looks like Kragwa, strangely enough. And even then, it's not the easiest of tames. It actually is the Plague Toads that spawn from Temple of Sephiroth, the very last boss. You probably remember them during the heal phase. They'll be jumping around, they'll jump into people, they apply a debuff, they're kind of annoying. But you can tame those. So what you want to do is, it doesn't matter what difficulty you're on, I would recommend normal for this because it'll make it easier. And some people will be able to solo up to the last boss in normal as a hunter, uh, depending on your gear at least. So make your way all the way to the final boss on normal. I would recommend doing this with friends or people you know, just so they know what's going on. It's going to be kind of hard to do this in a random group. And then once you get to the very last bit of the fight, oh sorry, to the last boss, DPS down all the adds and trigger the healing phase. And you're going to have the Plague Toad start to jump in. Once they're spawning, you can kind of see where it's going to spawn. I threw down a freezing trap and began taming and got myself the Plague Toad. So the tame itself isn't too difficult. It's just a little bit rough to get to the last boss of Temple. And then you've got to have people that will allow you to tame it as well. Sambas is the next pet on our list. And I like this pet quite a lot. While it isn't anything really too special, it's just a very cool looking lion. It's unique. It's the only lion like this that you can tame so far. And it just looks quite nice. And especially if you're an alliance and you have like the alliance guild mount and stuff and a very alliance-y transmog, then this mount and pet will really stand out. So, yeah, a quite a nice pet, especially if you do want some kind of lion pet. To get this pet, you will need to head to the Twilight Highlands, and it's going to be a rare spawn in there. It has about a six-hour respawn timer. It has three different spawn locations, one to the right, kind of one to the middle-ish right, and then one a bit more to the left. You'll see those on the map. And you want to just keep checking those, and eventually it'll spawn, and you'll be able to tame it up. Nothing really too special for a 120 to tame this. I believe it is trappable as well. So if you are lower level, you can make use of a trap, but it doesn't really do anything too special. It's just a case of finding it will be the, the main difficult part. And then once you find it, just tame it up and you've got yourself Sambas. The next one up is an actual boss tame, a raid boss tame, unlike Fenrir, which is just a dungeon tame. This is Chimeron, and it's quite a nice looking pet. It's a different kind of Hydra, because normally they have three heads, and this one's kind of two heads with this little hey you guys arm thing going on. So it, it's kind of cool. It's weird and disfigured, but that kind of makes it cool. So if you want this pet, you will need to head to the Blackwing Descent, which is a Cataclysm Raid. And that's found near the Searing Gorge. You will need to fly up to it. It's kind of on its own little plateau area. Head there, head inside. Doesn't matter what difficulty you do it on. And then you will need to kill the first two bosses found on the left and the right side as soon as you enter. Kill those. The gate will open, allowing you to head into the lower section. Once into the lower section, you want to head left and then head into the first available room on the left and then we'll be at Chimerum. So the tame behind this pet is to get it to sub 20% to begin the tame. So I would recommend taking off quite a bit of your gear and at one point I even removed my weapon because I'm doing a little bit too much DPS. So you do want to make sure you're not doing too much DPS. I would recommend getting rid of your pet as well so that you're not doing too much and killing it by accident. Just take off as much as you need. I mean, you, you shouldn't have to worry about dying yourself. So just take off the gear that you need, uh, start killing it, get it down to sub 20%, and then you can begin the tame. And then that's it, you got yourself a Chimera. The next one up is another rare spawn, and that is Terrapine. 
and it's kind of like very similar to, well, not very similar at all, but like the Lowland Manor Shell, it is another turtley looking pet, but this one's all molten it. So if you're running like a red transmog or a molten transmog, then this could be a nice pet to go along with it. It does look quite cool, and as I said, it is a, res a rare respawn. You're going to find this one in the Sulfur and Spire. No pre re prerequisites to get to this one. Just go head over to Mount Hygel in the Sulfur and Spire area, just directly outside of the Firelands. You'll find this molten -y area. And it can spawn here. It's on about a 6 to 12 hour respawn. So this one's going to be a little bit tougher to get a hold of. But depending on if you want it or not, it could be worth the camp. And just keep checking this area. Once again, checking war mode and non-war mode. Checking all the lava area. And eventually you'll find it. Nothing too crazy with this tame. Just tame it up and you got yourself a terrapine. Um, low levels might struggle a little bit. It does do a cast that you can interrupt. But once again, as a high level, you can literally just begin the tame. And you won't have any issues there at all. Now this pet visually doesn't look that great, but if you are running kind of an older looking transmog that isn't as high res as some of the gear that you can get in today's World of Warcraft, then the Corpse Scarab could be a good pet to go along with your older looking transmog because it is using an old model. And what makes this pet unique is the fact that it is still using the old model because most of the, score, uh, the Scarabs, I should say, in the game have a new updated model. So if you are looking for more of an older looking, you know, bad model, then the Corpse Scarab is going to be one for you. And it's a fairly easy tame. You just want to head to Naxxramas, which you'll find in Northrend and in the, the Dragon Blight. Head inside Naxxramas. Once again, doesn't matter what difficulty you're on. And then you want to head to the Arachnid Quarter. And we're going to head up to the first boss. And then once we're at the first boss, just don't do any damage. And eventually a Crypt Guardian, I think the cold will spawn. And when the Crypt Guardian spawns, you can kill the Crypt Guardian, but don't kill the boss just yet. And then after a few seconds, uh, Scorps... Ca Corpse Scarabs will spawn from the body of the Crypt Guardian and you can just pick one and begin taming it and then once that's done you will have yourself a Scorpse Scarab. The final pet on our list is Karkin. It's this metally looking crab looking thing. It's quite nice. It does look very unique compared to the rest of the crabs. It does stand out quite a lot. It's going to turn some heads and it isn't the easiest thing to get so older players or I should say newer players probably don't even know this is a thing. So it is going to make you stand out from a lot of the new players in World of Warcraft. All the players will know where it comes from, but the newer ones will be like, whoa, what's that pet? Where'd you get that? So this pet actually comes from the Molten Front, and there is a bit of a prerequisite to even enter the Molten Front. As long as it's remained the same as it used to be, you basically have to complete the main story in the uh, Mount Hygel. Once you've gone through all of the Mount Hygel, you'll have a quest at the Sanctuary of Malone called Opening the Door. So I would check there first of all, maybe they've removed the prerequisites, but if not, you're going to have to go through like the main story of helping all of the different guardians, like the bird and the turtle and stuff. And once you've done all of that, check out the Sanctuary of Malone, and Malone even, and you'll have a quest called Opening the Door, and go through that, and that will lead you into the Molten Front. If you have the Molten Front unlocked and you don't remember where it is, it's basically directly facing the Sanctuary of Malone in Mount Hygel. It'll be a big portal on kind of this rock. Head inside there, and once you're inside the Molten Front, you're going to have this fiery area. Depending on how far progressed you are in, the fire might not be there. But if you just entered the Molten Front, it's going to be a big chunk of fire. But you can kind of hug the right side and not take any damage from it. There will be a bit where you've got to take a couple of ticks of damage, and it might kill you. But even if it does, you can just corpse run back and make it through the final section. Once there, there's going to be this little jumping puzzle. And once you get to the top of that, you're going to be where the car King can spawn. Now, Karkin does share its respawn timer with Scar, which is about two to six hours. So you could keep getting Scar spawning over and over again. But honestly, Scar is worth taming too. It's quite a cool looking cat pet, like a metally looking cat. So if you want that, give that a tame too. So I have two slots open so you can get both. But Karkin itself is going to spawn on one of these rocks. And the main difficulty behind this pet is when you begin casting the tame on it, it will cast a barrage, which is on a five second cast. Once the cast finishes, it will stun you and deal a good chunk of damage. So the idea is you are meant to interrupt the cast, but if you want to enter, the cast will, uh, the interrupt will probably kill Karkin. So you can either take off all of your gear and hope that it doesn't kill it, or you can alternatively use your pets like Bloodlust, or you can use Drums of Fury or something, and then get rid of your pet, and then begin the tame because your tame speed will be reduced because of the increased haste which is going to allow you to finish the tame before the barrage happens. So it's up to you, but the second you start casting tame, it will do barrage. 
So you either need to interrupt it or be able to get the tame off before the, uh, the cast finishes. So that is the final pet on our list and hopefully this video helped you out and there's some pets here that you liked. All of these pets are ones that I quite like so hopefully you know there's at least one on the list that you were like yeah that's pretty cool I'm gonna go get that. And yeah we also have a discord server if you want to come and join it we've got quite a few people on there now. It's in the description below hopefully we can get it growing and have enough people we can start doing some fun runs together like glory achievements and stuff like that. But feel free to join it's the best way to contact me you can share your transmog in there you can talk about mounts and pets and stuff. Hopefully building a nice little community. Also if you want to support the channel in any way check the description down below and look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.